So next up we have Joyful Music Therapy, here to share some information about music therapy and how can we incorporate this into caregiving. We have um, Tamala Ponder, she's a neurologic music therapist, executive director and founder. She's a board certified music therapist, a member of American Therapy Association. Tamala has been serving with the special needs community of Central Florida in 2008, since 2008. She holds a bachelor's degree in th music therapy from Loyola University of um, New Orleans and an associate's degree of arts and music education. She has completed her graduate studies in infant and toddler, toddler development specialist at the University of Central Florida and has additional certifications in neurologic music therapy from Colorado State. We also have Am Amy Gower, who's also a neurologic music therapist, associate director and intern supervisor. Amy holds a Bachelor of Music Therapy from Converse College, a board certified music therapist, and has additional certifications in neurologic music therapy from Colorado State University. Amy loves to work with clients of all ages, specializing in older adults with dementia and various ages. Please welcome Amy and Tamala with Joyful Music Therapy. Good evening, everyone. Are you ready to get active? <laughs> We're going to engage your brain, okay? <laughs> well, this is Tamala, and I'm Amy, and we're so happy to be here with you tonight just to tell you a little bit about music and what it can do for your brain. We're going to get started with a fun icebreaker, okay? So this side is going to be side one. Woo woo! woo, -woo. This side's going to be side two. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Woo woo! Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Woo woo! Okay. All right. So we're gonna learn a couple rhythms really fast. We're just gonna clap them together, okay? Super easy, not gonna be hard at all. Just follow me. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Go. One, two, three. And stop. Great job. All right. Now we're gonna do a trickier rhythm. It's called hot potato. It's my favorite. It goes like this. Hot. Potato, hot, potato, hot. And stop. All right, woo woo, you're with Miss Tamala. Oh yeah, you're with me. All right, so woo woo, we're gonna start with hot potato. Miss Tamala's side's gonna start with one, two, three, four, five. We can count to five, right? <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And stop, switch. One, two, ready, go. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato. One, two, ready, switch. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, ready, switch. Potato, hot potato, hot and stop. Nice job. Mm, give yourself a hand. See, we told you we were going to wake you up after that wonderful dinner. Thank you so much uh, for the dinner tonight. It was great. Yeah. So you were doing a lot of functions just now, just clapping your hands. Your midline runs down your body, right? Well, you're right in your midline. You're using your eyes. You're using your ears. You're using your occipital lobe all the way to your executive functioning. Music uses the whole brain. So we're excited to kind of tell you about how music can help your loved ones tonight. First, we want to explain who we are and what we do. What is music therapy? This logo is from the American Music Therapy Association, and it's a fun definition. It's the clinical and evidence-based use of music interventions to accomplish individualized goals with therapeutic relationship by a credentialed professional who has completed an approved music therapy program. There's a lot of information, right? So we're gonna break it down in the next slide. It's evidence-based practice. We didn't just go out there and start playing and singing with people. There's research, there's lots of research on the brain and how the brain processes music and how it's developed in the brain. We do individualized goals. So we find out what your favorite music is. If you came into my hospital room as a music therapist and you started playing Celine Dion, I would throw something at you. I don't like Celine Dion. Sorry, Celine Dion. I love the Beatles. So if you came in my room and you started jamming out with me, 
my heart rate's going to go down. My, I'm going to release happy hormones. My oxygen level's going to go up. You're going to see all kinds of really neat therapeutic benefits, physiological, emotional, and social. We are board certified. So we have a degree in music. Now, you can, entry, you can enter into the field at a bachelor's level. You can also enter the field at a master's level. It's called an equivalency program where you still have to complete all the same amount of hours and everything, but you have to typically have a degree in music at the bachelor's level to, to enter uh, into a master's program. Um, but what you do is you, you take music history, music theory, all of those really important music-based classes, and then you take psychology, anatomy and physiology, biology to understand disease and the brain and the body so that you can be therapeutic. And you have to complete 1,200 clinical hours before you, before you graduate. So you're doing a six-month internship at an um, approved site, whether it's approved through a university or nationally through a program. And then you have to continually certify every five years and, con and accrue 100 continuing education credit hours. All right? So how does it work? We get a referral from someone like Dr. Laird, who has referred a few people to us. Thank you, Dr. Laird. And we do, uh, we call the family, explain what we do. We bring you in and we do an initial assessment where we look at social skills, cognitive ability. We look at motor skills, like um, what Joshua mentioned earlier. If, we're, if we've got someone with Parkinson's and we've got a shuffle gait, if we've got someone with dementia, maybe they're having difficulty recalling or have poor memory or poor skills in that regard. So we look at the whole person and then we make a treatment plan based on non-musical goals. So we look at them and say, how can I increase their range of motion? How can I increase um, uh, their stamina? How can I increase their uh, quality of life through music? And we do, at our facility, we do weekly sessions depending on what the person can tolerate. It may be 30 minutes, maybe 45, maybe an hour. It depends on their threshold. And then we document everything that we do. We go back and re-record it um, for, for insurance purposes, but also so that we can show and document progress. Because what are we? We are evidence-based practice. So Miss Amy, is putting on an iPad for your loved one, is that considered music therapy? That is not considered music therapy. It may have therapeutic benefit to it. It may help them wake up. They may engage with you. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But, but we wouldn't call that necessarily music therapy. Music therapy has to be done by a board certified music therapist who has the training and the degree, okay? So here are just some goals we're, gonna, we're just gonna hit on real fast. Uh, it, it encourages verbal and nonverbal communication. It assists in speech and language through rhythm, dynamics, tempo. It stimulates the whole brain. It's a non-threatening environment to express your feelings. So, so on and so forth. Uh, what I love about music is the whole idea of personal achievement. You know, you've done something together. It's fun. You're not having to be pinched or poked or prodded. And it, who doesn't love music, right? Everyone in here loves music, right? If it's music that I love. Yes. <laughs> and that's why it's client preferred. Remember, I'm going to throw something at you if you sing Celine Dion to me. All right. So this is a whole list of people who can benefit. And of course, older adults, people with dementia, people with cognitive impairments can benefit from music therapy, but also caregivers. Something that we love to do and when we're working with loved ones is include the caregiver in the session. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go ahead. Do you have the story of, um, of Julie and her mom? What she used to say? There was um, a lady that uh, Amy used to see for several years. And her daughter hired us to come in, um, even when she went uh, just from being in, um, in long-term care to actually being on hospice and, and through that journey. And she told me that the hour and then two hours that Amy would come in and sing with her, she would get her mom back. And so what she started doing was she started bringing the grandchildren to the therapy sessions because they wanted to see their grandma, but the daughter didn't want them to see grandma like this. They wanted to see grandma engaged, right? And so that's what, that's what music does, is it stimulates the brain on such a level that it can engage people 
until the very end of life. Till the very, very end of life. You know, what do babies do? You don't have to teach babies how to dance, right? They just bop in as soon as they hear a beat. And we can enjoy it all the way to the very end of our life. So we think of quality of life for seniors, right? Well, music is heavily processed in your limbic system. That's where you process short-term memories into long-term memories. It's also where you heavily process smell as well. That's why as soon as you smell those cookies that mama made for you when you were a little kid, that you suddenly are brought back to that kitchen, to that moment. Same with music. If I started singing a song that was popular the year you graduated high school, you're going to be taken right back to that moment, senior year. I remember doing this, I remember doing that. And we see that a lot with seniors. Um, some of you may have seen some documentaries that they've done where there's a gentleman and he's, he's in like this, right? And then you start playing his music and he comes alive, right? Alive Inside, I think, is the name of that documentary, uh, which is a really great program. Not music therapy, but a really great program. Um, so it stimulates this, this life review, this reminiscence. A lot of times, if you're your caregiver can't, can't share information in an intelligible way or has difficulty communicating with you, a lot of times you'll see you can sing a song with them and, and sometimes they might be able to say, express a memory that they have or they, they might start talking about what they felt about that music or a memory that they have about that music. And also, you know, loved ones who are still, are still able to have a conversation with you, so, who are still able to converse with you, it's a great way to, to get into a life review conversation. And we'll talk a little bit, we have some takeaways for you today, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in our takeaways. Um, it decreases pain, it decreases agitation, isolation. These are all things that older adults face as they, as they progress into their, their, de their dementia. Um, learning an instrument. If your loved one is interested and willing, have them learn an, an instrument, whether it's ukulele or piano. They don't have to be good at it. It's not about being good at the instrument. It's about exercising your brain. People who play instruments test higher on scores because it's a workout. You're using your occipital lobe. You're using your motor planning. You're using your executive functioning because you're reading a sequence. It, it's a multi-brain task, and that's why it's so effective. And so if they're willing, get them to learn the recorder. Get them to learn to play the ukulele. It's fun. You could bring, you could bring them to someone like us where we'll, so we sit with them for 30 minutes, and we'll play their favorite music. If you take them to uh, just a general music teacher, I advise that you have them explain to them what's going on with your loved one and that they need to use a music that is something they're going to enjoy and find out what their preference is. Because if you have them playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. They're going to throw that ukulele at you, okay? So make sure that they're, they're, they're teaching them music that's, that's going to um, appeal to them. Do you guys use music for self-care? Yeah? Yeah? How do you use they're music like, for self-care? They're like, what self is self-care? Right? Yeah. <laughs> How do you use music for self-care? I listen to the Beatles when I drive home after seeing my mom. There you go. Awesome. I love it. That's great. Anyone else want to share? Joshua, do you use music for self-care? Yes. Good. And how do you? Oh, she said that she listens to the jazz station on the radio. Yeah. UCF yeah. jazz. Great, great. So just listening to your favorite kind of music. You know, thinking about the words, reading the lyrics, getting involved in it, you know, it can be very therapeutically beneficial for yourself. Um, something that we like to do as music therapists is a legacy project where we either record a loved one or we, we write a song together as a family. I have an older adult work that I worked with for about a year, and he and I wrote songs together. And at his funeral, we were able to sing his songs at his, or his memorial. It wasn't a funeral, it was a memorial, it was beautiful. And his loved ones, everyone got to contribute to those songs. So they got to be included in his life up until the end, and they got to have a piece to hold on to him. So they have those song lyrics, they have recordings of those songs, they have recordings of him singing those songs. It's something to hold on to after the end of life. Um, and also, you know, if you decide to utilize a music therapist, if you need a break, 
You can go and sit in the other room for 30 minutes. I had, a, I had a family that did that with me where I would come in and I would work with the client and she would go and sit in the other room and take a 30 minute break. So that's also an option as well. Ms. Tamil, do you wanna talk about? Sure, so um, I started Joyful Music Therapy um, around 2010. I start, moved here and worked for another company for the first two years. Um, but having a degree in music therapy, I really wanted to focus specifically on music therapy. Um, we only hire board certified music therapists. We are also an internship site. So interns come and we put them through the ringer <laughs> so that they can be ready whenever they leave us to sit for their board certifications. And if they're awesome, then I hire them because music therapy is a growing field. Uh, people actually know who we are now, which is really awesome. If you're from this area, then we would love for you to come and contact us and, and we can set you up with a music therapist. There's other options if you're, if you're um, in, in this area. I know that there's a choir called Musical Minds. There's a lot of resources, a lot of resources that are musical based. We are in a community that supports the arts, which is really, really awesome because, um, you know, like Dr. Laird was saying, a pill doesn't fix everything, and we know that, right? And so that's the reason we're here to say, what else can we do? How else can we make this journey more holistic, not only for our loved ones, but for us as well? Um, so we have all of these different things going on at Joyful Music Therapy. Our facility is located on Lee Road in Orlando. Um, so we are going to play a game called Name That Tune or Name That Movie. <clears throat> Does that my face look familiar? If you know the song, sing along. <clears throat> Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high, there's a land that I heard of once in a lullaby. Can you name that singer? Judy Garland. Judy Garland. Can you name that movie? The Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. You did it. Yay. All right. Do you, do you, does he look familiar to you? Yeah, Gene Kelly. I think you might know this song. Please sing with me. Do 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 I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling! I'm happy again. I'm laughing at clouds so dark. Up above, <clears throat> the sun's in my heart, and I'm ready for love. Can you name that movie? Singing in the Rain. You got it. Now, who is that? I heard it, Gordon McRae. Now, he's harder to recognize for me, but he sang a little song I think you're familiar with. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye, and it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful Everything's going my way. I love that smile, sir. All right. The last, we're going to, okay, we're going to skip the next one. But one of my favorites, deedle, deedle, deedle. There you go, you got it. All right, so our takeaways for today, we just wanted to um, give you some tips and some tools for using music with your loved one. 
we want you to know that yes, as board certified music therapists, we are there. We are there to support you when you don't feel like that, hey, maybe, maybe music is something that my loved one might like, maybe not. We're there to help you with that. The awesome part about music is we can help you set up a plan that's gonna work for your loved one and then you can implement it every day. We can't be with you every day. I mean, your, your other therapist can't be with you every day, but that gives you a way to connect with your loved one. So it doesn't have to be overwhelming. We've got these takeaways with some little hints and stuff like that, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming. It can become something very special, very, very special for you and your family. And these are ideas, and if you, you don't know the answers to the questions, that's okay. And it doesn't matter where they are in their journey, if they're still very verbal and they're still very talkative and they can share with you, great. If they're at the point where they're, they're um, maybe no longer as responsive or maybe we're towards the end of life, the auditory system is the strongest system in the body. It is the last thing to go. It is the first thing to come back. It, let's say you were brought out of a coma, it'd be the first thing to return. So that's why we see in hospice so often our loved ones will linger till that last family member shows up to say goodbye. So these are just some ideas. Think about music that is meaningful to your loved one. Remember the, the Celine Dion picture earlier, right? Um, you wanna use music that they like and you know what they like. I'm sure you heard, it, heard them engaging in it while you were growing up. It might even be your music too. What was popular when they were in their early teens, late 20s? Um, use your technology, right? Go online, find out what music was popular then if they can't tell you. Uh, what is their favorite? Who is their favorite artist? What is their favorite genre? Um, something you can do together is read the song lyrics together. Oh, and what color are we going to read in? Lime green. I love that. That's so wonderful, right? So even if we think that they can't read, let's try it, right? What what is it? What can it hurt? Nothing. Let's try it. Yeah. And you know, even if if you're just talking with your loved one and maybe they're not responding, can you share a memory with them? Oh, mom, I remember riding in the car with you and we we blasted this tune, singing at the top of our lungs. Or I remember you you dancing around in the kitchen to the song while you made dinner, and just sharing that with them, even if they can't they can't reciprocate. It just gives you something to talk with about them that you can remember and be fond of, especially when you have family visiting and they might not know how to respond to mom anymore. They might not have to know engage with dad anymore but you can do it through music and make sure that you don't think that just because you're not a singer or a musician that that isn't you know that you're not prepared or you're not able to do that you know what it's just been in really this last couple of generations where musicians had to be professional to get any you know accolades I mean back in the day almost everybody had to take piano lessons right whether you were a pianist later on in life, you had to take them. I know that I had to. It's a good thing that I went into the career I did, but so did my mom and so did her mom and her mom and her mom and people would stand around and sing. So this is something that is in us as a child. This is something that is intrinsic to human beings um, and not to professionals. Professionals, they have their, their um, place, but we want you to feel empowered to use music with your loved ones. Uh, so. We are almost out of time. All of that is on your takeaway right there. Um, we just wanna say thank you so much. Here is our phone number and our email address. We, like I said, we're located here in Orlando. If you wanna give us a call or reach out to us, uh, we, would be, we would love to meet with you and your loved one and set up a plan that you can utilize on a daily basis. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you today.